so like uh, can you tell us a bit about of, of yourself and your background in the open source community in general like, yeah sure uh, yes uh well yeah i first of all i am a computer science student i am still studying right now at the time uh that i applied to mlh i was a sophomore i was a second year and i was just getting started into all of this uh coding stuff i didn't really know much about anything really um and mm -hmm. i knew i some friends told me that there was this mlh fellowship thing um and it sounded pretty interesting so i uh looked it up i applied and um yeah that that's pretty much how i got started with with open source before that i hadn't really done sure. much on my own uh outside mm -hmm. of school projects um and you know to apply to the mlh fellowship they want you to show some open source code that you that you built and the code yes. that i used was actually code that i had written in classes uh, projects that i had made with some friends um mm -hmm. just for coursework and that's how i got started into this uh contributing to open source code okay okay so like uh, from where uh did you get uh, what i can say motivation kind of things you you are interested or just curious to know to contribute to and thus you started that kind of stuff yeah i think it was something that happened gradually at first as i told you i didn't really know what was up with the coding world i actually yeah. didn't enroll in computer science at first i was doing mechanical and electronics engineering it had nothing oh. to do with coding I switched um and I started learning about all of this all of this uh like projects big projects that big companies were were making were hosting and okay. my interest actually grew after I started working with some uh friends working on projects working on building web applications and all of that kind of stuff I learned what could be done with coding and that's how I yeah. uh got interested in into actually you know building stuff that is useful for people that isn't just a project that i will keep for myself okay okay you just really love that kind of tech stuff so you uh, involved in that you know just, just like uh, do what we love that kind of stuff you are doing right now you love to code and uh, try to uh, solve the problems right so yeah exactly the background it's a pretty great background like uh, uh very insightful things from your profile uh further we can move we can move further so another question is like uh, some can you give some insights about mlh fellowship and uh, uh, uh you gave motivated like how you get motivated uh, to apply to the mlh but uh, can you give insight about mlh fellowship like what kind of tracks are there and uh, who can apply just like you just applied you are you were in second year right so who can apply like yes. all that kind of stuff can you give that some yeah sure i understand that pretty much anyone can apply as long as you are a college student or or i think you can okay. apply also if you recently graduated and as long as like you're interested in coding and have uh, at least some piece mm -hmm. of code some code snippet that you worked on and that you can show uh, that you that you can use to showcase your uh, like basic skills uh, that's enough um yeah i don't know uh what else i was no, supposed no, to, no. to answer no no yes it, it is actually that kind of stuff like uh, have you walk uh, can you walk us through the application process actually so we can understand better in that way like how did you apply yeah, what sure. kind of project what kind of essays you were asked and all that kind of stuff yeah sure i actually do have a, a list where i was writing everything as um wow. i applied and so mm -hmm. The first step is to, you know, send your application. You go into the MLH website, you fill a form, and you wait for them to contact you. In my case, they contacted me one day after I applied because I applied right after the summer applications had opened. I scheduled an interview, and this first interview, it was just me talking to someone at the MLH fellowship to see to tell them why i was interested in the fellowship um okay. which in my case it was because i wanted to learn more because i wanted to contribute with my efforts to open source uh applications and so i got through that interview 
Um, and then one day later, I scheduled another interview, which is which was they they call it the code conversation. And so this code conversation, what they will ask you is to submit some piece of code that you've written and you will walk the interviewer through the code that you made just so that they have uh, like the confidence that you understand what how code works. They don't expect yeah, you to yeah. bring a full application, but just as long mm -hmm. as it's uh, like a piece of code that, that shows that you have some basic skills, that's, that's enough. And yeah, I had that interview and one day later I received a, an email telling me that I had been accepted to the, to the production engineering program because there's a couple, a couple more. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's pretty great. Like you just, uh, like means you are preparing, uh, for the, uh, before the application process, right. You are, you had in mind that I have to apply for MLH fellowship. You just applied right after they released the form. Right. So. Another yes. uh, thing I want to ask uh, uh, on basis of that, like uh, what factor did you consider when uh, choosing the project, right? You must have uh, some background, like uh, you know some lang programming languages which you are applying and on the basis of that, you are uh, uh, making some projects, right? So like uh, yes. there are many factors to consider, like uh, oh, uh, if you make AI ML project, so there are some factors you need to consider. Uh, data models or uh, which data set to use that kind of stuff so for your project what kind of uh, factors did you consider while applying well for my project i was uh, i didn't actually consider it that much because i at the time only had one uh, complex project that i could showcase okay. um okay. it was a web application i know that some other people applied with like small games that they built maybe in Python or using JavaScript, some people using C++. Um, but yeah, for me, it was simply, I chose the most complex project I had made up until then, uh, which was a project that I made with, with a team of other coders, but I had built a kind of a robust uh, a piece of, of Python code. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I showcased. And that was what they, I guess, liked to, to accept me to, to the fellowship. Okay, okay, that's that's great. Like uh, another thing I want to ask, like uh, how did you really prepare for uh, application or interview process? Have you uh, like uh, uh, seen some YouTube videos or you have some friends or you had some connection in MLH who already did MLH fellowship? So how uh, did you go through that stuff? Yeah, actually, the applica the process through which I prepared was kind of really simple. I, I saw some classmates here at the university that I knew had already been part of the, had already been fellows at, at MLH. And I asked them to interview me, like do mock interviews so that I would be more comfortable when, you know, the actual uh, interview came, came around. That was, I think, the primary uh way I prepared mm. myself. And also mm. for the coding part, I did have my, uh, like the application I had developed with some friends, but I sort of had an idea of what I had to showcase when I would be interviewed. And so I started, you know, polishing the code that I had. So yeah, that was, that was my prep process. I asked people to mock interview me and yeah. I tried to polish a little bit the code that I had. Wow, wow. It, it is like your batchmate helped a lot. It is like you are lucky to have batchmates like that. So you can just, uh, they uh, help you to excel in your uh, career path, right? So it's yes. pretty much great. Like it is kind of peer learning or open source learning. And like you just uh, tell them and uh, they just help you, right? So it is um, yeah, definitely. a very, very nice thing. I mean, you got very good friends, batchmates, right? So... That's yeah, definitely. I think. Interview. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think surrounding yourself with with the right people yes. is is key. Uh, if you might not have friends who have interned at Google, at Microsoft, at like big tech, but yes. you will likely find people who have already gone mm -hmm. through some interview process at X, Y, or Z company. They sort of know what it's like, and that's the kind yes. of people that are likely to help you succeed and you know just gathering around all of those people mm. help 
helps everybody grow. Yes, it's it's true. It's really true. Yes. Another thing I want to ask based on interview only, like uh, in traditional job interview, we have like first technical round, three to four technical rounds maybe, and then HR round, right? So you just mentioned you have a review of code, like piece of code. So which part of interview was that, and how many uh, parts are there to like uh, go go through your process while you apply in MLH? Yeah, the interview process is actually pretty short. There's only two interviews. The first one is the mm -hmm. phone screen, where there it's just kind of like to assess your interest in the program. That's super quick. I think it was like oh. 10 or 15 minutes for me. And then the second oh. interview was also super short. It must have been at most 20 minutes. Uh, oh. It was probably 15 of me just you know showcasing the code. I didn't even have to run mm -hmm. it. Um, I, I did run it because we, we had some time after, after I had walked my interviewer through it. But yeah, it, it was like a super short uh, interview. I shared, I think we used Zoom. I shared my screen. And so I started explaining, oh, so this function does this thing. And so this is because the application does this whole thing. And then this snippet maybe uses an algorithm that does X or Y thing. Yeah. And yeah, that was pretty much the, the entire process. Okay, wow, it's really nice. I mean, they like, uh, they get to know from the project basis, I guess, because uh, sometimes yes. it's interview that much short. So they just know like right on click that this is the guy I want to like, uh, uh, except into program, right? So yes, you just uh, uh, like uh, told about a project you did with Python. So can you give some insights about that? Like in short, yeah, like, for sure. Oh, what are the yes? Yeah, I'm actually remembering. It was not in Python. It was in JavaScript. We worked okay. in Python at the fellowship, but it was a web app. Um, so we built a server, like a, an application where. It was sort of a questionnaire, kind of a, like a Google Forms uh, clone. And so the snippet of code that I showcased was the uh, like the backend part that processed the, the data that was sent from, from the application. And that was pretty much everything that I showed. Like there was a lot more code behind, but all mm -hmm. I showed were, were like, uh, yeah, I think two endpoints that received the data. Hmm. So based on that only, like, uh... Uh, which skills were required? Uh, uh, obviously, the, some tech skills are required, like you mentioned, JavaScript and Python and stuff like that is required. But uh, on top of that, uh, some soft skills may be there, may not be there. But uh, can you list the overall things uh, which are uh, required while applying at MLH? Yeah, sure. I think the most, the single most important skill is communication. To be able to talk to the people that you that is interviewing you uh, hmm. you have to be able to explain what you have done so i guess also like structured thinking uh be able to put your thoughts into into words and um yeah i think those two are the primary skills that you will need uh because in the end if you want to join the fellowship you will become a fellow and these people who are interviewing will be your fellows so you have yeah. to be able to, to connect, to find that uh, like connection with, with the people at the fellowship. Right, right. It's uh, most of the light of skills must be uh, there. Some, some, at least some, you uh, may not be expert in that, but some is required, right? So yes, like yes these, and I uh, think that's... Yes, yes, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I think that's like this soft skill is especially important now that we're just students, you know, because yes. this applies for the MLH fellowship, but I think it also applies to any job interview that anyone will yes. ever have. Because in the end, the people who interview you are those who will likely be your team and they will want someone yes. they can work with. Hmm. Or they are not machines simply. They understand the feelings and all that kind of stuff, right? So exactly. there are people we will be working with, not the machine. Right. So another uh, question for you is uh, like uh, this also helped in a personal growth, like MLH uh, application or uh, fellowship helped in your personal growth. But how it was helpful in your uh, professional growth, although you are a student, but uh, you just interned with uh, two companies. So how uh, it was useful for your professional career? Yeah, it was, I think it was important for two things. 
The first, the first one is that it made me confident about my skills. I was already yeah. a decently skilled student, computer science student, but I didn't really know where my skills fit in uh, when, you know, it came to actual projects, real world projects. So that was the first thing. And then the second thing, at the production engineering program, we learned a ton of things about Linux. We learned wow. to code in Bash. We learned to monitor processes and a ton of things that in the end go towards the track of DevOps. And so wow. I, after the fellowship, interviewed at Intel. And it was for a position working with Linux and developing DevOps tools. Mm -hmm. I was actually able to, to answer most of the questions that the interview posed me about monitoring systems and um, like building things for, for their Linux pipeline. And so that's what yeah. helped me land my first, uh, like, I guess you could say actual uh, job. So yeah, yeah. I think MLH was definitely a key piece in me getting that job. Mm -hmm. And in, in just uh, like theoretically, while we watching tutorials, we just understand that. But if you have applied, so then a confidence can, uh, a confidence appears in you, right? While answering questions. So it is uh, like, yes. we are confident about uh, that stuff. I can do that. So we can answer right, uh, right away and quickly. Yeah. So it is quite yes. great. So MLH also uh, helped you in uh, your professional career also, right? And uh, another yeah, thing I, I want to ask. Yeah, I actually forgot to mention. Yes. Yes, I actually ahead. forgot to mention another thing that we did at MLH is they ha they hosted mock interviews for us. So oh, wow. you know we interviewed with actual engineers at like tech companies. Most of them, I think, were American. Uh, and yeah, they interviewed us like they would have interviewed someone for a job at mm -hmm. their company. And I think this also helped us yeah. like gain this confidence and to feel comfortable when interviewing so, so that, you know, we could actually showcase our skills and we wouldn't be nervous about, oh, maybe I'm gonna forget this or I'm not gonna uh, mention something. Okay, okay. It, it's, it's pretty great. Like they prepare you for, uh, already you are working in real industry, but they kind of prepare for you real uh, scenarios or a situation where you'll yeah. be working with a big tech giants or companies, right? So it is quite yes. pretty good. MLH is kind of, uh, uh, it covers the all area, all aspects of uh, what we'll be doing in the company, right? Yes, so it really, another, really does. Yes, another thing I want to ask uh, that, uh, uh, what kind of uh, timeline, basic timeline uh, you followed uh, for the whole MLH program? Yeah, the MLH program, if I remember correctly, was 12 weeks long. And mm -hmm. so every week we went over a different topic. Uh, I remember we saw things like monitoring system. Well, no, I, actually, we started with like more uh, elemental basic stuff uh, like how to code in Flask, how to maybe build a Python server, how to turn it into uh, one of the most exciting t that topics that, that, that I found to be most exciting, how to turn those servers into Docker containers and how to turn them wow. into Linux services, how to monitor Linux services. And I remember the week that I struggled the most and the one I think most fellows struggled the most was the one where we went over like everything about Bash. Uh, so we wow. had a ton of stuff to learn, a ton of uh, like different commands and different uh, like ways of handling data in Bash. Because hmm. we like you could say we learned a complete a completely new programming yes. language in one week. Uh, but oh. yeah, so it was twelve weeks and one topic per week. Uh, like you never got bored because there was always something to be learned. Hmm. Yes, and most exciting thing about, I think that, uh, I don't know about MLH, but it was project-based learning, which uh, yes. really helps us a lot, really helps us a lot. Uh, uh, if you uh, like only watch tutorials, it is not worth it at all if you don't apply in really small projects, right? So it is a very yeah. uh, like interesting stuff to apply on project and make interesting things out of that, right? So. Finally, we just covered the some of the um, aspects of MLH fellowship. And finally, what advice would you give 
So uh, to the other uh, aspiring MLH fellows. My advice would be just apply. Uh, wow. You will <laughs> not know if you will get into the fellowship until you apply. And okay. yeah, like get coding, uh, build projects on your own or find people to build projects with. That's also going to make it a lot more exciting. And yes, yeah, yes. just apply. Be, be um, like aware of when applications open because I believe oh, if you yes. apply early, you're more likely hmm. to, to land a to spot in yes, the fellowship. Yes. yes, exactly. That's pretty great advice. I mean, just start, just do it, right? <laughs> Everything will yeah, uh, uh, place fall in apart. Yes. So it's uh, pretty great. Like uh, you just described the whole MLH, right? So uh, is yeah, there man. any other tracks or that kind of stuff? Yeah, you you applied for AIML or I, I heard that. I don't know really. There is software engineering. There is uh, another thing that kind of tracks are there. So what are the different tracks uh, they are having? Yeah, back when I applied, there were only three tracks. I know now there's a couple more. So I would encourage uh, everybody who's watching this and is interested to go look it on their website. But back then, there were three tracks. It was the software engineering track, open source, and production engineering. Software engineering, I believe you worked, uh, software engineering and op open source, you worked on, on a project, like on a real uh, project. Yes. You contributed something to the, to like the GitHub repository. And uh, yeah, like that was the purpose of the fellowship to, to mm. build like a feature that would eventually be incorporated into, into like an open source library. And there, yes. then there's a production engineering uh, program, which is like very different. It's more uh, like learning, uh, project-based learning. And I believe there's okay. now an SRE one, which kind of goes uh, in, a, in a similar track. Okay, okay, okay. It's uh, pretty vast than uh, if uh, previously well, there was three and uh, if, uh, if this time there is more than it is growing like uh, very much. Yes. Right? Yeah, so it was- Yeah, uh, companies are very inside. interested in- Yes, yes, go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, I, I was gonna say that companies are mm -hmm. very interested now in, in finding uh, students uh, that are interested in these fields because sometimes yes we as students are kind of blinded as uh, to, we, we think that there's only like back end front end and that's it that's the end of the yeah, story so all but this it really kind of isn't there's a ton of different like fields that, right yes 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 we just go through only traditional stuff uh, which we learn from college or university and uh, we just uh, go yeah. on with that but there are fields like uh, uh, you just mentioned right so uh, yeah, there's really many more. Currently need it. Yes, yes. It was pretty great insight about MLS program. So thank you for. Uh, I'm going to uh, go. Uh, yes, thank you for giving the insights about MLS fellowship. So thanks for watching, everyone. Thank you for the invitation. Catch you guys. Yes.